I feel like I did not expect to come into this interview and have love be such a big theme. <laughs> the, you know, the love of your dad for your mom, Charlotte's love, your love for your bird and your dogs. And it's it's really interesting to me because in lots of ways we're extremely different. I am I am I have too much grey. <laughs> I can I can I can always see all the points of view. You know, I lean humanities, I am not detail oriented, I am people focused, not task focused um like if you mapped our personality types we probably would be opposites but because we've been able to encounter each other at just a vulnerable vulnerable human curious open not in not in threat not in the differences are a problem that they mean that one of us is right and one of us is wrong that we have to defend ourselves or we have to argue for ourselves We've been able, you know, on a Zoom co- podcast conversation, we, you know, we're not soulmates, but, you know, it has felt human and natural. What, what, and it, it, uh, uh, what I'm building up to is I feel like we're losing that skill. Uh, we're, we're, it's, it's easy to see difference as threat, divergence as, you know, we, we talk about neurodivergence as like difference as deficit or difference as a problem. And, and hardening into our tribes, hardening into our perspectives, political or religious or whatever it is. What have you learned as you've communicated about neurodivergence? You've communicated about climate, one of those most triggering and difficult and, you know, wicked problems to talk about without everyone getting very tense very quickly. What helps us keep seeing each other as fully human? Kindness, I think. I think that in order, if you, you know, I, I always say to people, look, we... In order to solve our problems, environmental, we've got to transition. We can't just switch off. And, you know, we, we, we're going to need to move in, in, you know, as rapidly as possible, a rapid transition, one hopes. But, you know, and not everyone is going to jump at the same time and not everyone is going to run at the same pace. So in order for that um, transition to work, we need to be tolerant of one another. And, and in order to be tolerant, you've got to be patient. And in order to be patient, you've got to be kind. So the division that you've spoken of, the polarization which blights our life now, it is so destructive. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't hate Donald Trump. I, I, I don't hate the, the chief execs of BP and Shell. I could sit down and I could talk to them, you know, but, but, but there's no point in manifesting that degree of polarization. That's not going to solve any problem whatsoever. And, and I think it comes again back to those fundamental values. You know, I, I am, a, and we should all be, I think, you know, far more tolerant than, than, than we are. And I do remember, I think that, you know, I think well, I vaguely remember, you know, m- more tolerance in the world. I mean, we've always been fighting one another over ideologies, you know, material things and, 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 and sometimes utter nonsense. And that worries me. But, yeah, tolerance is, is is really important. You know, that's why I, you know, like I'm not I'm not an atheist like my dad was. I don't believe in a god, but that doesn't make me. I don't think a, a, an atheist. I don't I don't need to bring people. I don't need to challenge other people's beliefs. I like the fact that they've got those beliefs. I like most of the beliefs that they have. I mean, you know, I'm the, I, I, I'm the guy that always listens to thought. Uh, you know, thought for today on Radio mm. 4, because I love the breadth of all of those ideas that come from different beliefs, faiths and religions. But they, do you know what? There's an enormous commonality between them all. And for me, what I like listening to it is because it's about humanity, actually. And you can break it into faiths if you like. You can subdivide it. You can draw lines in the sand. You can give everyone flags and brand them and tattoo them. But basically, when those people are, are, are delivering their messages, they're, they're, they're talking about humanity. And humanity is broad and diverse. And therefore, in order to, you know, to, I suppose, to basically love people, love humanity, you've got to be tolerant. And that, that's fundamental. We've got to be able to fight for that right to be tolerant, which is, again, you know, we, we're, we're com- compromising the right to protest in the UK now. You know, we're tightening the laws on protesting. Um, what is that? That's a lack of tolerance. That's a lack of saying you're not entitled to publicly voice your point of view. Well, mm. I mean, that's just, that's not going to work. We've, we've seen this historically go in completely the wrong direction before, and it will go in the wrong direction again. So I think that 
One of the core strengths of religions, as I understand them, um, is that it, it's they're centered around um, humanity and us as you know a conscious organism and the way that we manufacture that conscience and have to exercise it and satisfy it and interact with others' consciousness. And, and that's quite a complex thing. And people have gone in different directions in order to, you know, come to their, uh, you know, their belief structure. But ultimately, I just see, you know, I don't see much difference in, in, in the messaging when you bring it, when you really distill it. And I love all that messaging. You know, it's not going to make me a religious person, but I have enormous respect for those people, again, they, who've got the courage. They've got the courage to, to put that, that, that whole, everything that means everything, their, their life thoughts, their work, um, the, the processes that, the, that, they've, that, that they've come up with, they're prepared to lay them out in front of you for you to judge, take, reject. Yeah. You've got to admire that, whatever whatever view you might have of it.